Welcome, welcome, people. It's Q from q Up Productions, and today uh, we're still in Luna. Um, oh, man, it's a little bit too hot. Let me turn that volume down a little bit on my voice. Um, okay, so uh, today we're talking about uh, templates in Luna. Um, I kind of alluded to this the other day when I posted my first video. Um, today, I just want to show you kind of what the outcome of that was and some tips and tricks that will help you out along the way when you decide to do the same thing. So first off, uh, you have to go in and, of course, load all the instruments that you want in there. These are just a few that I chose. Uh, pigments, some Arturia things, uh, some output audio stuff that I, I love using their stuff, especially XL. Um, and all I did was set everything up. And just to kind of show you how I have things uh, laid out here, I got all my instruments here. I went ahead and set up a bus. Uh, to run all each of my my instruments through this bus this particular template that I'm working on here is just for making samples and things like that uh, which if you want to get some free samples as well as get some samples that are really really cheap check me out at uh, queuedupproductions.com and um, hop over there and snag some up for me so support your boy all right um so I got that coming in here and then I also have um you know, some parallel compression on another bus, another separate bus. And I kind of like to keep it open on some of the things uh, I, I want to use as far as compressors and stuff like that. Um, so I haven't put any any of those things in there yet, uh, but I do plan to do that. Um, then a simple delay and reverb. Um, and the sins are a little bit different, not too not too far off. But uh, let me see if I can show you that real quick. Go ahead and pull our focus on the tracks. And, oh, come on. All right. So if you uh, come over here and you get to some of these uh, these sections here, right? Okay, so if you look at the the buses, uh, all my buses here, I have them running out and run them to a sub mix. You probably really don't have to do this, but I'm used to doing it in, um, in Pro Tools and Logic and in Studio One. So I just decided to do here, you know, do it here too. But uh, one thing I have to say is when you're running their, their real time processing in Luna, if you have, you know, of course, you're running everything off of your UAD hardware. It just makes things that much easier and you don't really have a lot of lag. But this little thing down here, which is um, I'm still trying to figure this out. And uh, maybe if one of you out there have figured it out, maybe you can let me know. But if you come down here to the bottom, um, it says. Um, it's still, it says render and that stays at about about 30 percent and then of course when you go in and you start playing you know an instrument or something like that it does raise up and if you have i guess too much things going on then you know it does kind of give a little static in the feedback so i don't know if that's something that they're working on hopefully they do um it shows you what your your memory is and you know i'm, I'm pretty good on memory 20 percent, i think that you know should be good but, you know, sometimes it does bog down a little bit. All right. But um, let's say if we wanted to uh, uh, let me see, I set these up already. But one thing I like, I take that back. I love um, is that I don't know if you're familiar with a, uh, a program called Mixbus. Now, Mixbus has a way of having you do everything and mix everything without having to move too much away from the mixer. Everything is kind of laid out there. So they kind of have the similar, uh, same similar deal here where um, you have your faders coming in just like Pro Tools. If you want to feed anything to your uh, delay or your um, or your reverb. So that's a little bit different than the way, um, you know, uh, Studio One and Logic Pro does theirs because they don't really have it to. I mean, they have these knobs here. But if you didn't want to use these and you actually want to use a fader, you have that option here. But you don't really have that in um, Studio One or Logic Pro. Uh, but they still work nonetheless. Um, of course, uh, all the, uh, you know, I have all my, my reverbs and I, I always like to start out with some type of EQ. Um, oh, another quick tip. If when you open these, uh, your new, your plugins... And for some reason, they don't show where well, it'll just say audio unit. Let me see if I can uh, give you an example. All right. So let's say I wanted to insert something here. We'll go to something that I haven't used already. Um, 
And of course, UAD stuff's always going to be at the very top. So let's say I wanted to use this thing levels, right? So it open it up and it'll show the picture here. But up here in the top left, it'll show just this, you know, generic audio unit plugin. What you do is you go here, you come down and go create plugin icon. And when you click that, it'll go ahead and switch that picture out. Trust me, you'll thank me later for that. All right. So um, that's just another way um, uh, that you can go in and, and pick your presets also is by coming here and doing it this way. When you click on it, it'll show you what presets you have. If you click presets inside of here, which this one doesn't really have any presets. So um, that's really it. So that's another way of looking at those. And um, that is really about it for this. All right, so now let's go back. We'll go back to the, and we'll get rid of this. All right, so um, I already showed you from the first video. Uh, if you haven't saw that, it'll be a link uh, in the description to go back and check that one out. So you can go control and option, and that will shrink everything down or resize everything back up. Okay, so that's, uh, we already covered that one. But let's say that I'm here and I want to go to marker three. So that's when we start using some more keyboard shortcuts that um, that work great, which they don't really have a whole lot, but they do work. I mean, they have a few that, you know, definitely come in handy. So for this one, you want to go control option and you're going to go either comma or L. If you go comma, it'll go up. As you can see, it's jumping from um up to five and then i can bring it back down to four three and two and then back to one so that's a way you can jump back and forth control option and either the comma or the l so that's one way now something that um it took me it didn't take me too long to figure it out but you know one thing i i did um i liked and something that's very important inside of this too is this feedback button if you have any issues or anything that you want to suggest to UAD, I think they this was spot on to put this this close in where you can go in and give them suggestions on how to make things better. And, you know, we'll see how much they follow it when they come out with newer versions. But I do love that feature that it's right there. It's just click away. All right. So if I came in here and let's say I uh, just had this one note playing. Right. And all I have it is that size. That's one full bar. That's because this grid is up here and that's set to one full bar. So I don't particularly like to come up here and switch this whenever I want to switch the grid. You know, I mean, who really wants to do that? So there is a keyboard shortcut for that as well. You're going to hit that hold shift and you're either going to hit the plus or the minus. So if you hold shift and hit plus, you'll see that it's going from beat. That's half quarter eighth 16th and you can see that that grid is changing inside of that uh, the region itself so um the only thing i don't like is for us produ us producers and beat makers it does not have a split note function i did send them feedback hopefully i'll get something back uh or they'll you know come out with another version here soon or some type of fix and try to throw that feature in there i don't know about coding or how much time that takes or anything like that but you know, if nothing else fails, you can go in, change the grid, and then you can bring uh, your notes back or forward or make two notes, you know, whatever you decide to do. So it's just another way of, uh, of looking at it. Okay, so let's go ahead and shrink this back up. Um, and color coding. If you go back to the focus of the tracks, Whenever you have um, one of these uh, tracks, what you can do is, let's see here. If you click on the color that's next to it, it'll bring up this color wheel. And then you can change whatever color you want for that particular track or groups, you know, uh, entirely up to you, however, whatever you want to do with that. Um, if you want to make things disappear in your template or if you just don't like the way something looks it seems like it's a little bit too cluttered you may not want your your um 
buses and 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 things to to show here in studio one if you're if you've ever used studio one this should be familiar to you all you have to do is click this dot here and you can either just swipe down and it'll get rid of them that way or you can just plug them in one at a time it's entirely up to you um but that's something also that's very helpful can kind of clear up the clutter you know and only show what you need so there's that and really that is about it uh once how you route things and and how you um the the instruments that you put on there is pretty much up to you you can adra- uh, arrange it however you want it doesn't save as a template so you just go up here and just go save a copy as save it in a spot and then whenever you want to do something say you want to make trap or you want to make pop or something like that then all you got to do is go to that it'll open it up and then just save it as a different name when you get done with it so hopefully this video was helpful and that's my time be sure to like subscribe hit the notifications button so you stay up to date on all my latest content and most of all stay queued up peace